I can't tell you whether or not you should be happy about this story. There will be many people who are going to reject this as something huma humans should not be doing, while many others will be praising the scientific breakthrough. The story, first human monkey chimera, raises concern among scientists. Researchers reprogrammed human cells before injecting them in the monkey embryo. They are making monkey people. Now, I'm not, I don't want to be overly hyperbolic. It's just like they, they want to grow organs inside other animals so that they can provide human organs for transplant, but not use humans to do it. However, regardless of what they're doing it for or why they're doing it, we are going to see a, a moral dilemma of people saying this should not be done. Now it's a challenge. Should there be limits on how and, and why? Absolutely. I'm not going to tell you what those limits are. You should not, ex like, look, I'll give you my opinion, but you should have your own morals and comment below if you're watching on YouTube what you think about this and what you think is right. I don't believe to be an arbor arbiter of morality. And personally, I find this questionable. Questionable. Uh, I'm a big proponent of science. I love the idea of scientific development. I think genetic engineering is a very important tool for curing diseases and helping people. But then we get into some really dark questions. You know, uh, engineering humans before they're born for, for the right eye color, for height. Is that okay? What if we're getting rid of defects? Like you find out the baby is developing with, with some DNA that's going to give it, you know, a spinal disorder. I don't know where the line is, nor do I, I think I will ever be the arbiter of morality. So don't take my word for it. But these are interesting uh, uh, questions. Let's read the story and learn about the human monkey hybrids. I, I Okay, I, I gotta stop. I saw this story and I was like, my God, Alex Jones was right, wasn't he? Ah, and now they're gonna take that clip and smear me. No, Alex Jones has been talking about animal hybrids for a while, but we got a story here from The Guardian. I'm not gonna call The Guardian fake news, right? So um, let, let's read the news. Actually, speaking of fake news, before we get started, check out youtube.com slash subverse news. You can see it right on the screen, subscribe. Click the notification bell and share the videos. This is going to be straight news, 99.9% .9 news. There will be some commentary. We have live streams talking about issues, but we are going to be focusing on on the ground reporting and bringing you the news without the spin. This content is editorially independent of me. Other people are running it. I will not have a say in the day-to-day -day content being produced, though I will be contributing to the platform with news I will do. Point being, we are doing everything, you know, I's dotted, T's crossed. It is going to be legit, ethical, fact checkers, all of that stuff straight across the board, following standard practices for journalists, following like SPJ guidelines and Thomson Reuters. It is going to be legit because we need this in news today. Check it out, subscribe, share, because we really do need the support if we want to make something like this work. But let's get back to the news. The story of human monkeys. Efforts to create human animal chimeras have rebooted an ethical debate after reports emerged that scientists have produced monkey embryos containing human cells. A chimera is an organism whose cells come from two or more individuals, with recent work looking at combinations from different species. The word comes from a, uh, a beast from Greek mythology, which was said to be part lion, part goat, and part snake. The latest report, published in the Spanish newspaper El Paez, claims a team of researchers led by prof, uh, Professor Juan Carlos Ispusia, it, it, <laughs> Ispisu, I'm sorry, I can't pronounce your name, Belmonte, from, I'm just going to call him Dr. Belmonte, from the Salk Institute in the U.S. have produced monkey-human chimeras. The research was conducted in China to avoid legal issues, according to the report. Got a, got, I'm not surprised China is, it, they're, they're doing it in China because China is, okay, whatever, you get it. It's China. Chimeras are seen as a potential way to address the lack of organs for transplantation, as well as problems of organ rejection. Scientists believe organs genetically matched to a particular human recipient could one day be grown inside animals. The approach is based on taking cells from an adult human and reprogramming them to become stem cells, which can give rise to any type of cell in the body. They are then introduced into the embryo of another species. Belmonte and other scientists have previously managed to produce both pig embryos and sheep embryos, which contain human cells. Alex Jones was talking about that on the Joe Rogan podcast. Uh, I think his reasoning for it was pretty kooky, but I mean, yeah, this stuff's been going on for a while. Although the proportions are tiny, in the latter case, researchers estimate that only one cell in 10,000 was human. Pig human and sheep human chimeras are attractive in part because pigs and sheep have organs about the right size for transplantation into humans. The details of the work reported this week are scarce. Belmonte and colleagues did not respond to a request for comment. However, 
Alejandro D. Los Angeles from the Department of Psychiatry at Yale University said it was likely monkey-human chimeras were being developed to explore how to improve the proportion of human cells in such organisms. Making human monkey chimeras could teach us how to make human pig chimeras, with the hope of making organs for transplantation, he said. It could teach us which type of stem cells we should be using, or other ways of enhancing what's called human chimerism levels inside pigs. De Los Angeles pointed out that, as with previous work in pigs and sheep, the human monkey chimeras have reportedly only been allowed to develop for a few weeks, i.e. before organs actually form. Professor Robin Lovell Badge, a developmental biologist from London's Francis Crick Institute, agreed, I don't think it is particularly concerning in terms of ethics because you are not taking them far enough to have a nervous system at, or develop in any way. It's just really a ball of cells. Ooh, where have we heard that before? It's really interesting. There's going to be an overlap here on the pro-life, pro-choice argument. And I have to wonder how U.S. Le legality will determine what is or isn't life. This is where things start getting tricky in terms of ethics. In the U.S., they're, they're, they're doing this in China because China is, is lax on this issue. The question will likely come up in U.S. debate, though. And if in the U.S., you know, uh, this is London saying this. We also have someone from Yale. If the opinion emerges that a clump of cells is not life so they can do experiments on it, but in, uh, in, in the legislation, uh, the laws that come out, they say, no, you are putting human DNA and creating human life with animals. That's going to have repercussions on the pro-choice, pro-life debate. I'd imagine. I'd imagine. It's my opinion. If you're calling it just a ball of cells, I can understand that. But you've got to consider, man, we don't know enough about reality to make a determination. So there was one story about a woman who had cancer and they still have her cancer cells. She is still technically alive because her DNA and her cells exist. It's a whole other thing I don't know a lot about, but it, it, it's worrisome and disconcerting because we don't know the nature of what life is beyond what we can touch, smell, see, and hear. And then, you know, other tools that can expand beyond visible reality. But look, these are questions best left to philosophers and people of faith and scientists. I just watched an episode of Star Trek, la Star Trek, Star Trek last night. It's a famous episode called The Measure of a Man, where they're trying to determine whether or not Data, an android, is sentient life. And it's incredible. It is incredible. There's a scientist who believes that Data, an android, is not sentient. He's just a machine. He has, he has no rights. And Picard says, what makes something sentient? The doctor gives his answers, and then Picard says, prove I'm sentient. And he goes, I, but of course you are. Of course you are. Why? We don't know where that line is. And that makes things incredibly difficult when dealing with issues of life. Thus, the question of ethics, of which I am not the person to be answering that question. Don't come to me for moral guidance. I am a milk toast centrist sitting on the fence, confused by a lot of these things. And my opinions are mostly about more extreme ends. And I'm looking for rational arguments. <sighs> now I'm going to get all the enlightened centrist criticism. I get it. But let's read on. They said... Level Badge added that if chimeras were allowed to develop further, it could raise concerns. How do you restrict the contribution of the human cells just to the organ that you want to make? If that is a pancreas or a heart or something or a kidney, then that is fine if you manage to do that. But if you allow these animals to go all the way through uh, and be born, if you have a, co a big contribution to the central nervous system from human cells, then that obviously becomes a concern. Why though? Man, this ra raises a whole bunch of ethical conundrums about life. If we make little monkey people, and then we say, but they're just monkeys, but they're smart, do they have class rights? Do, do they become a new species? All, are, all, is, is it all of a sudden now two different intelligent species inhabiting the earth? What rights would they have? Could we make them do work, or is that slavery? These are questions best left up to the ethical philosophy, the ethics professors, the, 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 the philosophers, scientists, and the faith com and, and, and people of faith. Not for me. But I think it's, it's damn interesting, I gotta say. They say the news of monkey-human chimeras comes shortly after it was reported Japanese researchers, such as Prof, uh, Professor Hiramitsu uh, Nakauchi, received government support to create mouse-human chimeras. In March, Japan lifted a ban on allowing such embryos to develop beyond 14 days and, and being implanted in a uterus, meaning these chimeras can, if permission for an experiment is granted, be brought to term. So we get the point. They basically reiterate the same points, right? These are going to cure diseases. These could cure Alzheimer's and things like that. So I get it. I'm more interested in the uh, ethics of it. So let's read the end. While making monkey brains more human is a red line for some, 
In some ways, it has already been crossed. In April, scientists in China published a study in which they claimed to have introduced a human brain gene into monkeys, with the animals showing features including better short-term memory and shorter reaction times. These animals are not chimeras, but it is clear that new boundaries are being pushed. Lovell Badge said he thought it possible the development of human monkey chimeras to study a part of the central nervous system could gain approval, but that it could take a while. Let me know what you think. Um, this is a, it's a really interesting question. As, as science continues, we'll come to a point where humans will start cyberizing. You know, we've got Neuralink. People will start doing genetic modifications. Where is the line? Don't ask me. I'm not, uh, I'm not the right person to be a guide for morality. At least not on this issue, okay? Stick around. Next segment will be tomorrow at 10 a.m. Podcast every day at 6.30 p.m. Thanks for hanging out. I will see you all then.